You know, if you'll allow me, I think we should get an overview of this, first of all. Well, why don't we do that? The overview was given by the one person, apart from Jesus Christ, who could give it to us, and that was the Blessed Virgin Mary. She did appear six times in 1917, and the last time was October 13, 1917, to three children and to 75,000 people. There was a miracle, the miracle of Fatima, uh, at noon time at Fatima in Portugal. Port Fatima is a, is, a, is a small little hamlet, 75 miles from Lisbon, the capital of Portugal. Uh, let's not delay for the moment. We can go back to it later on, the miracle of the sun, because it's the, it's the, it's the paramount miracle of the 20th century, perhaps of five centuries. But she did convey three secrets to those children and told them not to publish them yet, but to convey them to the, to the local bishop. And one of those secrets has become the famous third secret. Uh, now that third secret was conveyed or written on one sheet of paper to the Pope, finally, in, 19, in the 1950s, about 1954 to 1957. The dates are always discussed by people. We know now the general lines of that secret. In fact, we know details. But the one outstanding thing was, Our Lady said that the Pope of 1960 had to open the envelope and read this secret and then do what she said. And the secret apparently on the authority of the Pope, on the authority of Cardinal Ratzinger, on the authority of many people, said the following. It was an either or. It was an ultimatum. The world is gone so far by this time, the secret said, that unless Russia is converted by being consecrated to my immaculate heart, then faith will disappear from nations and continents. Cardinals and bishops and priests will fall like leaves into hell. In other words, it was neither or. But if the Pope, in union with the bishops of the Church, in 1960, consecrates Russia, just Russia, the Soviet Union, the USSR, to my Immaculate Heart, then Russia will be converted and faith will be restored. Well, the sad aftermath of this is this, that Pope John XXIII, whom I knew, did open the secret. And he opened it privately, first of all, in Castel Gandalfo in August 1959. And then in 1960, he opened it in the presence of several cardinals. Cardinal Bear was there, my cardinal, and with two Portuguese interpreters. And reading it, and finding out that he was supposed to publicly, in union with all the bishops, and they were gathering into Rome, by the way, two years later, he was supposed to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and declare it to be a source of evil, but would be converted. He decided that Nikita Khrushchev, who was the strong man in Russia at that time, would take this as an act of war. Now, do you know, you may not know, that under Nikita Khrushchev, between 1958 and 1963, the most virulent anti-religious persecution took place in the Soviet Union. It's interesting. I do have uh, family in Russia. Uh -huh. And what a lot of people don't know is that the persecution under Khrushchev was even more severe than much, that of uh, mu Stalin. Much more severe, much more severe. Well, so John said, I can't do that. I, I can't, uh, because Nikita Khrushchev then would stop talking to me. At that time he was talking to John because John had one dream. He wanted observers from the Russian Orthodox Church to be present at his council. So at that meeting of cardinals, he took a sheet of paper and wrote on it, questo, meaning the letter, non è per nostri tempi, is not for our times put it back in the box of the, the letter and closed it. He refused the mandate of Our Lady for his own good geopolitical reasons. I think it was short-sighted. And above all, I think he disobeyed Our Lady. But I'm a simple priest. I'm not Pope. That's my judgment. When Paul VI came in, he read the letter and decided to do nothing about it. John Paul I read the letter, but he had only 34 days to live. John Paul II read the letter at the beginning of his pontificate in 78, October 78, and put it aside. And he only took it up again in 1981 when he lay in Gemelli Hospital, wounded. And then he suddenly realized that indeed Our Lady had saved him on May 13 from the bullets of Mehmet Ahmed Ali Amshah, the assassin. And he sent in for the letter and all the documents and Lucia, Sister Lucia's writing, she's the only surviving child. 
And then he sent a message over to the Bishop of the area and to Lucia asking the advice about one point. And then in 1960, 1984, he consecrated the entire world. Which is not what Our Lady asked for. No. Nope. He made a special mention of Russia saying that peoples, meaning the Russians, who still await their special consecration. In other words, the consecration hasn't been done. The point I'm making to you, Bernard, is that Our Lady's either or is in, is in action. She said, unless this is done, unless it's made public to all nations and all governments, all peoples, then faith will disappear from nations and continents. There will be huge catastrophes. Many people will die. But in the end, my necklace heart will save people. Knowing the future doesn't help one peace of mind, Art. <laughs> and uh, I remember I had the, the dubious privilege of reading the text of the third secret of Fatima, which I must guard by oath from repeating, but it isn't pleasant. I have a whole stack of faxes here asking me to ask you about that, and you obviously cannot speak of that. Not factually, not word for word. I can't. I took a note. But it changed pleasant. And the less you know about it, the better. Except that there is going to be a reckoning and that uh, nobody existing on the face of this earth will be exempt from knowing uh, the power from on high. They will interpret it in different ways. That according stands to, their, to reason. According, yeah, according, according to, their, to their According to their beliefs. Their pride and their culture and their bias. And uh, there will be people who even faced with the with the certainty that there is a greater power above our heads will say. They will deny it. They will. The no, they'll, they'll reject it. The scientists, for example, will find a scientific explanation for it. Well, they will. Remember the famous so-called Aurora Borealis in 1938? Well, uh, I, I certainly am aware of Aurora Borealis, but not one specific There was a specific one which they explained by saying Aurora Borealis, but it really wasn't that at all. They all agreed it wasn't Aurora Borealis. The only one who put his finger on it was Adolf Hitler. And he, said, say. and he said what? Well, he was in Garden at the Wolf's Lair. That was his famous uh, place. When he, for, for a weekend with his cabinet and Speer, Albert Speer who was a member of his cabinet his architect tells us in his second book that that night they all stood on the esplanade of his villa mm -hmm. in the Bavarian mountains looking out to the east and seeing these extraordinary sights of light and Hitler said yeah no, now we have to shed blood we didn't shed blood in taking the Tsar, we didn't shed blood in taking Czechoslovakia, but now we're going to shed blood. So he took that as a sign. Oh, he took it as it was a sign. Because the virgin who told the children in Fatima in 1917 about this sign, she told them it would take place just before the Great World War. She said, um, it will be just before they start killing millions. Can you tell us in a way that we can read between the lines with regard to the third prophecy? Um, is there is there a timetable that you are aware of that cannot speak uh, but cannot speak of that we can read between the lines on? Uh, yes and no. There is a. It is not two hundred years away. It is not fifty years away. It is not 20 years away, number one. Well, that's... And number two, it involves the entire world system. It's not merely one area. It's not merely one religion. It's not merely one race. Will be apparent to all. All, without exception. Without exception, and it will be frightening. Okay, well, I think I've asked as much as I want to ask about that. <laughs> <laughs> Let us uh, ask some questions of the audience.